Okay, so we'll do this in English, right? So my talk will be about the value of open data, and uh, I'll even try to do a demo, live demo, to show you how open data works, right? Uh, I will go into some of um, the stuff we've done, and the demo will be on open data and open data only, okay? So this is 80 sources that are in there. So on the force, quick introduction on the force, not a sales pitch by all, but anyhow, we're looking for good people. So remember this, if you want an exciting company, if you want to have data scientists, come to us. Okay, there we go. Very important, a why. So it's also a bit, little bit the startup community on open data. So in fact, it started, this is the picture of my kid. And I had a great conference a month and a half ago on innovation. And you know when innovation happens? When you have pain. I had pain. This is a picture of my kid. So what happened? My background is in medicine, biotech, bioinformatics. Worked 11 years in a big pharma. Had all the tools at my fingertips. And then it hit me. My kid had something. Six years old. He had issues. And I was looking with the tools. I was looking with all that information. Couldn't find it in dashboards. If I had to change the dashboard, I had to go to my BI people, IT team. Took a lot of time, took a lot of work. Adding in data, pff, very difficult. Secondly, I went, I was myself a data scientist, still am, I hope, but becoming a manager is a little bit different. And it's kind of a frontal lobotomy on the technical uh, level. But anyhow, so the unicorns, right, the data scientists, they go into the data and they give you reports. But even then, I didn't get to the results that I needed for my kid. What, what should he take? What kind of therapy? Where are the right schools? Where are the right pediatricians? Belgian data was missing. So what do people do? Most of all, they Google. That's what they do. They go, don't go to these systems. And you can see in the bottom, this is a slide that I adjusted a little bit, but there should be somewhere a reference, probably the resolution is too low. This is a slide from Gartner. So we were a cool vendor in Gartner, but what I said, you're filling in the gap in business intelligence. It's the gap between the dashboards and the gap between the unicorns and the deep data. It's called data discovery. And for data discovery, and this was an eye-opener in 2014 in a big CIO gathering in Barcelona of, of um, Gartner, as I said, you know what data discovery needs? It needs semantics. You need to map issues together. You need to link data. It needs scalability. It needs to be very fast. People hate new tools. It has to be fast, slick, and simple. And thirdly, it also needs democratization. So this means ease of use, but also ease of use in the payment. So you cannot ask 200K or 50K or 50,000 euros for this. This has to be cheap. So our tool, we're not releasing yet broadly, will be freely available to any patient, okay? Because I want to help the Renzos out there and the parents. This is a little bit also to position big data value, right? So, um, and open data value. So we're also as a startup, it's cool to be a startup in Belgium, by the way. I really want to make that statement. It's cool to be a startup in Belgium. IMINES, uh, Agentschap Ondernemen, uh, so many people, the booster program of Deloitte. So they did this effort with the booster program and they assessed with R&D IT managers. We work very hard on life science and healthcare. And they asked a question about the four Vs of big data. So do you have the issue of a lot of data and can you handle it? So in fact, the green says, yes, we know this is the issue. We have to do something. And the dark green means we can do something. This is in big pharma and big biotech. Yeah? So it's not the smaller companies. So and what you see there is that there's a lot of issues where only 10% has a solution for data variety and semantics. So we use semantic web technology to map data to each other and to make it accessible. And this is needed for open data. Because open data is nice, but it's a mess. So you need to clean it up. And also veracity is a very important one. It's, this is really nice in graph database and also in, in, in semantic web uh, the setups is that you can keep track of your data sources. You know where it comes from and you can keep track of it. I'll show it in the demo, okay? So as I said, I'm a huge fan of what Tim Berners-Lee does from the beginning, but also I think the third step, which is the web 3.0 or the semantic web. And it's not a new web, it's an addition to the web. It's the semantic web. So I don't need to explain this here, but very quickly, always an example to explain semantic web very quickly, what it can mean to you. Yes, I do city trips with my wife each year because I still want hard work is good, but also you need to balance it. And so last time we went to Paris and I traveled a lot, so I have a, I have a lot of Hilton points. So what I said to my wife, I can do it live if you want to. 
Let's do it, right? So let's go there. So she said, let's go to Paris and let's book uh, the Hilton Hotel. So I said, no problem. I'll search a hotel. So what we do is Paris Hilton. So I need to type. So you see my son has it somewhere for me. But when you type this in, it's probably an issue with, we have an issue with yours, please. No, there you go. So when you search for Paris Hilton, of course, Google is stupid in that sense. It doesn't know you're looking for the hotel. It doesn't know you're looking for Paris. So when you have a true semantic web and open data with the right metadata, it will tell you, you have 105 million hits, but what do you want to see? Do you want to see the celebrity? Do you want to see pictures? Do you want to see videos? Or do you want to see the hotel? Adding semantics in Google, you can do this. You just do this and you add in hotel and then the hotel will be on the first place. This is easy when you know the data upfront. It's called hindsight information, right? Once you show it, it's easy to find. But if you're in complex data, I beat any of you as a data scientist. And I've put on the challenge many times. So now going back, so this is the problem, right? So we add in semantics, my little Paris Hilton story to, keep, to remember you what semantic disambiguation means. It's not a full dumb list of, of hits, but it tells you what do you want to see. It disambiguates your data. So then I come to the open data, my love. <laughs> so I'm a huge fan of open data. And I worked in pharma. And it was very tricky the first years I tried to do this. I was very lucky to work for Susie Stevens. In fact, I met her last week again in Princeton. But there's a huge, a huge effort in open data. And I don't have the full slides. You can look it up in linked open data, or I will tweet the link. But it started with music and DBpedia, so making Wikipedia open data, semantic data, so that it's reusable, that it's not just a site, but it's reusable. And it grew and it grew, and in fact, you cannot read it here. It's not on purpose, but I'll zoom in, in the life science. So on the right, when you go in there, there's a very nice uh, vector diagram about it. And you see that life sciences is what I zoom into, because I said onto false right now was work on life science and healthcare, so making drugs and selling drugs and finding therapies for patients. These are all the, the open data sources in 2014. So what happened? Ah, cool, open data, let's go there. So somebody had a question on what's this protein with that disease? We need to fix it, right? Because there's a lot of people sick. So we had to go to these one, two, three, four data sets. And then you have the four sites open, you, you copy and paste, and you make a little Excel or a PowerPoint. Then I said, nice, so um, we have these proteins that really have to do with the disease. What kind of molecules, slash becoming drugs, match to that? So the proteins are in the human body, which relates to the disease, and the drug, the molecule, is here what you take in as a drug and what can help you save the disease. So you have to go to, in this chart, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sources. So if this is not in one place and not truly linked data, you already have quite some websites open, and you, you have to handle it. Then they said proteins is one bit, but genes, and I can go in and diseases, is this this disease? What type of disease is it? And so on. So I've worked in this area. So I had all of that data open and up and running and people were copying and pasting. And that's where I said, there is open data, but is it really useful? I should have put in a, a slide on the five star data of Tim Berners-Lee. Who knows this five star data? I think Peter knows it, but cool. Look it up because five star data, this, this is for the government. I'll, I'll tweet it. You have to have five star data. That's true open data. No one star data. So one star is you put on a PDF which you scanned in. It's there, legally it's open data, but nobody can really use it. You have to print it and read it. If it's text format, it's already better, but you still know what, what's this text, it's unstructured data. And then it goes up. So five star data is when you have truly linked data with right metadata that when you search for Paris Hilton and you mean the lady or the hotel, you'll get there. So this is something you need to look into. And so this is the pain we try to, 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 to give an answer to with Discover. And now I will really try to do a trick here. This is one of our favorite use cases, but with this public, it might not work that well. But guess what? There's a company somewhere in the US, and they asked a question. They were working on lung cancer. So lung cancer, everybody knows. And they were looking for a treatment on lung cancer related to EGFR, which is an antibody in a gene, right? And they said, can you show me where in phase two clinical trials, so making a drug is 12 years. It's now $2.2 billion to make a drug in 12 years. So phase two is like one, one bit in it. So in this bit of the phase where it's tested on humans, can you show me all the lung cancer trials in the world 
where this EGFR is mentioned, and we work on anti-metabolite drugs. Can you show me the anti-metabolite drugs? Okay. So if I go back to my slide, I had to open probably nine of these open databases, copy and paste, and then send it out. So I will show you live how this works in a true linked data tool. So let's try and do this. You need to keep time into control. I have my watch here. So that will flash you. So in fact, we will show our Discover tool. Again, Discover is an application which started on open data, but we have a lot of traction of merging internal and external data. So there's a lot of gold there, right? So the big companies have a lot of internal data sets and they cannot merge it easily. So we use the same approach which we apply to the open data. So that's a value of open data. By demonstrating, you can reuse it. But the true value there is not only the open data as such, but enriching your internal data with open data. You found this gene specific in one of your tests. What is this all related to? Can you show me all the clinical trials? Can you show me all the patents? Can you show me all the publications? Good luck. We've done these questions many times. It takes four people, 50 hours of actual work in a span of three weeks, and we will do this in five to 10 minutes because we have open link data at work. So let's do it, right? So I will log on first. And my typing is not so well, so my kid got it from somewhere. I have the silent gene, he has the expressive gene. There we go. So as we said, with semantics at work, and I won't go deep in Sparkle, but I can talk about it later. <laughs> Sparkle endpoints and link data fragments if needed. But the thing is, this is a new way of search. Typically, data science, they put in these huge strings with all the words, and, or, this, that, that, and then they have an answer. This is different. Just put in EGFR, and remember the little Paris Hilton story? So what we do is now we mine 68, 69 open data sets from the US, from which 26 research institutes. Clinical trials in the US is open, you can mine it. It's three star data. In Europe, it's two star data. So what it means is just a website that you have to scrape it and then make it work, doesn't work. At clinicaltrials.gov, they already have an XML dump which you can use. Okay, so it's much further to, to reach out to. So we go in all of these data sets, it's around 7 billion, 7 billion entities we go into. Also the patent data is in there. And you see how quickly we gave the answers. And then it's the Paris Hilton story, right? So I said EGFR, but what do you want to see? So if this would be Paris Hilton, do you want to see, the ho probably the celebrities would be highest up, right? Then do you want to see the hotel? Do you want a region which is a capital? So now also it's easy because I have 56,000 hits here. I can go into the clinical studies. And the nice thing is, who knows about using ontologies? Not so many. We will look into this. You know, it, it, it's got a lot of traction right now, definitely in life science. So what we do is, an ontology is a description of the data. Very simple. Ask Peter, and he can teach a lot about this, right? But the thing is, the ontologies here drive the interface. I always say a good coder, coder is a lazy coder. But I'm not a lazy person. I want to have nice, clean code that does it very quickly. I don't want the spaghetti code. That's what I mean with it. So this software also, it's semantically driven that when you change the data and when you change the ontology, it automatically shows in the interface. So going back to the use case, EGFR. We clicked on the clinical studies. Then we have all these kind of widgets which I can open up. And we said we need the phase two clinical. So now I already have 672 results. And what you see, and this is something really nice also, which people like a lot uh, that our users, is each of these query is a Sparkle query that's launched. So it's a very rich query, which is very difficult in the actual source. So we set EGFR, where they're recruiting or not yet recruiting phase two clinical trials, because the terminated ones, I, I cannot find my competition there. And then we said it has to do with lung cancer. So you also see the map, it shows better there than on your computer, Philippe. But there you go. And then you can also search in the properties. And you will see that, for instance, I find a lung cancer. And I found 81 results. So I can scroll down. Oh, there's a little button here to go to the results. So now this is already, you can do this, right? I'm still in one source, which is the clinicaltrials.gov in the US. So when you're in that source, it aggregates the data. But this is linked data. So it means that it doesn't only take the data in, but also all the pointers outside and inside to it. Because an ontology describes the properties of a clinical trial. What do you want to see when you look at the clinical trial? You want to see the persons related to that. You want to see the diseases. 
the drugs which are tested and the organizations, right? And you see, indeed, open data is not always that, that clean, right? 15 uncategorized, okay? And the nice thing is you can go to all of these results, but because you use semantics, you can go back and imagine the power of this. You can go back to all 82 results and see all the linked data of all these 81 clinical trials. So now they said, show me this anti-metabolite drugs, EGFR clinical 2. So now I'm going to jump, if I would go back to, so to the drugs, oops, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. So let me go back, it's not a problem. This is a nice thing of our tool, we keep track of your search. So we're selecting the drugs here, and what I do if I go back to my presentation is, I was searching in the, uh, in the diseases, some of these pink, pink ones, and then I jumped to three or four, in fact, all the molecule databases here are queried at this point immediately. So when I go back to the search here, you will see that we have 80, I cannot read it here, all these uh, clinical trials. And again, they said, we want to see the ones that are anti-metabolites. So now it's a little bit technical, so it will go a little bit quicker. But people know, for instance, is this respiratory or others? And again, it's really nice because these queries are very complex to make. If you want to do this as a data scientist, it's a lot of work. So we made an interface to make this really simple. So you see here, anti-metabolites, I can do search also. And now I found, you see, only two drugs there. And the question was, which companies are working on it? And you have Eli Lilly and Tiva. So only in seven, eight clicks, I found this information across a lot of data. And the nice thing is here, I can also go to these drugs and I will show you also the veracity. So if you look, for instance, at this drug and you click on data sources, this is graph databases and the coolness of it is you can see where the data comes from and you see true data, semantic data aggregation. So you will see that the synonyms are there, right? So there are several synonyms. I challenge chemists to say, look for this and find your data. I'll come back in 20 minutes, probably not have an answer. Because all of this is mapped together in one data source. And also from a provenance perspective, so sometimes you will have dirty data. So this will happen in Belgium too, I'm pretty sure. And then you can cut out some of these data sets. So we can cut out data, and then you can see, for instance, one data set is better for the economic data, the other the research data, and you can play around with it. And so the nice thing is I can go on at any point of this data. I can look at the publications. Now I jump even to all the publications. I can say, and this is a nice thing of these Parker queries that are made simple. You can go there, you can find the publications. Again, an example, hopefully, of dirty data. I should probably go into another example. Let's see. Come on. Yeah, I'm lucky. So this is another thing with semantics applied. So if you go and do literature search, you search for these people, Kim H. But who is Kim H.? So we aggregated semantically, and you can then choose what Kim, is, it, is Kim H.O. or Kim Hyung? Is that the Kim H? Because it's very difficult to find it. With semantics in big data, even in patterns, in publications, in, it's all merged together, and you can find the people. It, it's, it's truly wonderful, but of course, yeah, we created it, but talk to our users, okay? So then you can go to the articles, and you can go on. And as I said, provenance is very important. A frustration that I had, is the fact once you do these searches that sometimes you, you make your search and you cannot go back to it. So for us, the Sparkle query, the query on all of these data sets is kept in there so you can share it. So you don't only share, look at these three publications of Kim H, but you can go back to it. So I can send this and share this to a colleague with this little button. I share it, I won't do this now. And then this colleague will see this and will say, but Hans, what have you done here? This doesn't make sense. You can change it at any point, so I can remove steps. I can go in, oh, I removed everything, that's not smart. You can go into this and you can say, yeah, but look at these, these, and these, and you make your new discoveries at any point. I can go straight to the publications. So the nice thing is that semantics does work, first thing. Linked open data does work. People are willing to pay for it. We raised money to do this. So it is possible there's a lot of value to it. And ultimately, and this goes back then to my slides. Ultimately, I don't know what slides I have left here. Yeah, I should talk about this one. This is very important. So I have five minutes, I think, right, Philippe? So ultimately, we want to help patients with this data. This is my passion. So I studied for a medicine doctor four years in Ghent. But in my fourth year, I was so impatient, uh, uh, how do you say, impatient with the patients that I got in my IT stuff. That was better for me than talking to people. So this is where it started. But it's really nice. 
And also, I would say, we tried so hard, and I'm not blaming, I, I, I talked to, to Philippe Mertens and others, it's, it's difficult in Belgium, I understand, but we're so damn slow. You can tweet that, <laughs> people were blaming you for it, but anyhow. Belgium put 1 million euros in Ontofors, the company that I'm leading and that I founded, to do this. I tried to do it here in Belgium, but I had to go to the US. In the US, they picked it up in one month. We had results. We had 26 research institutes. Now I have to go back to London before I come to Belgium. So we have to be quicker. So kick Alexander's ass and the others, OK? <laughs> we have to be quicker. I mean it. Because it's possible. We can come to a, a, a hospital and we'll open data in, in one, two, three days. Won't be more. It is possible. It does work. So we work with Harvard, of course, that's a great, great help because they raise a lot of money from the NIH, so the National Institute of Health. And what Harvard Catalyst do, they have an open source component. They have a collaboration also with Multimedia Lab, I think, on, on this. And so this is kind of setting up not a website with keywords, not a web service, but I would say a data service, a Sparkle endpoint link data fragment. Don't go into the details of the technicalities, but make sure you have five-star data with right metadata. This is what Harvard does. And we as a company, guess what? Open data. As a small company that has to watch its cash, we say to any of these hospitals, and we do this for free. We'll set it up for free. We'll do it, because if we need to ask for money, it's probably another three months, six months, and probability of success, 5%. Okay? So we'll do this for free. We did it also for Ghent. We're going to hopefully do it for all the universities in Belgium. Kind of nice to see on such a, sh a short landscape that there's so many silos, but anyhow. So we can do this, we do this because there's a tremendous value in this. If you don't have to go to all of these websites, if you can do this in minutes, you can find all of that data, and if people truly would open that data, it would be, this is also Tim Berners-Lee vision on the semantic web, it would change the web significantly. So I call also to action, if you, any of you are in a university or related to bodies that can influence, please do so, because we need it and it will help us. And it will help us in many values. We're writing a white paper at this point with Harvard Medical School to outline. So I will send it out to Philippe, and you can share it uh, here. Uh, I won't spam you with sales or whatever. We don't have salespeople. We're, we're really scientists, right? But the white paper will talk about the value of open data and open science. Uh, opening your data does not mean giving it away. It does not mean giving it away. And every industry becomes data-driven. There's a huge value in doing this. Huge value, OK? So our hope is this will probably one of my quotes in the white paper. Our, that, that more data becomes truly freely available and semantic search can then help uh, patients. As I said, this is my passion still. Impatient with the patients, but patient with technology, <laughs> I would say. And also walk the talk. Try to get to hackathons. Get together. Yeah, open data is done together. So in two weeks, we're doing another hackathon. We're sponsoring it. I give away the pizzas because if I have two nice data endpoints, I put it in this cover. My customers are happy, and I can find more customers. So we call that secondary monetization. So by investing in open data, you have nice data to put in your tools, and you can sell more. So that's also a way to get value of open data. Okay? So also the point was to talk about Belgium and the US. I think in Belgium it's changing a lot. It, it's helping. But from an open data perspective, we're not there yet. Far from. So we need to do something. Okay? So some takeaways, got two minutes left. Some takeaways here is, I told you data discovery is this gap with semantics that Gartner also seen, that Forrester has seen, so it's happening now. In fact, you have these hype cycles, so semantic web has evolved. So look at it, because it's happening now. Last week, I was meeting with 14 IT managers in Big Pharma, and 12 of them committed to do this, and they're doing it internally, okay? So I explained you a little bit be going beyond keyword search with semantic web. The use of open data, driving standards. So I didn't talk too much about standards. But uh, there's definitely value in open data. Maybe I can use the two minutes for these last two points. So if you have standards, there's also a lot of value in that, right? Because then we can all talk the same language, right? There's so many investments done already, but they failed big time. So that's, that's a little bit of shame. But if, if we all talk the same language, it's so easy to integrate data, right? Uh, data science would have less work. So what I truly believe, and this is also our challenge for the hackathon in two weeks in London, is there is data in Europe at the European Bioinformatics Institute, and there's data in the US. And they use different ontologies, different descriptions. There's two standards, but two standards by definition is not a standard. So what we do in the hackathon, we're going to merge these two standards to create one standard. And ontologies, because it's so easy to do this, 
an ontology that's driven by the, by the crowd will be the standard. It won't be a person saying this is the standard. So this is also for me a part of open data. In fact, at Ontoforce, everything we do in there, we put by definition in the open space, okay? So when you look for a disease or a gene or, or a molecule, you have to go to publications or to buy Thomson Reuters to have higher level curated data to get to the data. And then you will say, oh, it's that university. And then you go to the university. So it's all these hops, all the time, all the money. This is wrong. So this is why people really believe in us that we don't disrupt with technology. And they call this the Uber of biomedical data. In the future, there was a nice statement from a Google guy. But what we're doing is, if all these research institutes, and let's please do this in Belgium to have open data, we don't have to buy all of this stuff. We can go straight to it. And that's where we will disrupt businesses. And this is also huge value of open data. So this said, we have an investment probably that will be announced in December. It's a US investor, and they believe so hard in us that we can do this still in Belgium. So I hope that we will have enough support in Belgium to do this. So open up your data too, please. Thank you. You talked about ontologies. Is that where most of your investment went, or it's not clear? Well, that's a good question, in fact. Um, in the beginning, so we, we raised one million. So the we raised that in December 2012, Ontofos. Okay. So the first thing we said with in 2013, first we'll make a backend uh, to make this work, and we needed help from Multimedia Lab because we cannot do this on our own. So first money went into a good backend. So I said, I'd first one the go-kart before I put on the tutors and the ballon, eh? the carousel. So then we said the second part will be usability. I, I didn't put the slides here. Normally I have the slides on us usability. Very important for this data discovery to work. Eh? This democratization has to be quick, sharp. So our mantra is it has to be slick as, uh, simple as Google, slick as Apple, and fun as Angry Birds. So that's the second investment. But now the biggest investment is exactly what you ask for, is curating the data. So we have written a patent, not because we want to lock it in, but because we want to own this and definitely not have others lock people in. That's my way of patenting. Uh, if I own it, at least I, I, I can keep it to us and we can open it. But uh, we've written a patent on um, curating data by the crowd, so crowdsource data curation. So if that happens, then this question is out of blue, but now the biggest bottleneck is indeed data curation. So there's a lot of work to do in data curation. If you have a clean data set we've done in a company, we integrate in one hour. But if the data set is a mess, then it needs time. What we're doing though is we're, we're going to do another IWT uh, study where we do automated uh, ontology enrichment. So first you can throw all your ontologies. We've got all of this stuff. We throw it to the data, it maps. Secondly, you say these are missing. Do you see somewhere a property that's missing but maps to an entity that's there? Then you can glue it together with semantics. And thirdly, we're going to look at the instances and say this is an instinct that doesn't map, but we're sure that this is a drug. Then you can say medicine, same as drug, and it glues it together. So we're going to automate, but right now it's, it's indeed uh, quite some work. We can do one data set if it's huge and complex in one week, if it's simple in one hour. That's the frame. So I have a question, uh, Mark, if you I can't understand why you wanted to do a hackathon in London when you could do a hackathon in London. Well, let's do a hackathon here. Motivation, uh, no, the motivation is this is the SWAT for LS uh, stuff. I, I tweeted it. Uh, I think I still got it open also somewhere. No, it's on my computer, sorry. So, semantic web applications for life sciences. Uh, we sponsored the hackathon last year. Very nice. I, I love these hackathons because we had issues in finding, finding um, people. So, we said to the hackathon that fix that uh, Hyung Hawaii, right? So how many Jim Wests are there? And it's Jay West and Jim John West or whatever. You need to find it. So in the hackathon, that was fixed, and everybody can use it. So we do this in the Semantic Web uh, Life Sciences. So that moves. It was in Berlin last year, in Paris the year before, in London. So maybe we should say, let's host it next year in Brussels. And if there's hackathons here, I'm in. Don't worry. And the team, too. We're traveling with eight people to London, by the way, for that. So we, we will do a hackathon for good somewhere in, uh, in May. And uh, that hackathon will be around, we would like, like to have it around the research and cancer research. And that hackathon will be uh, named uh, after Federico, who, who left us last week. Federico was one of our founders and uh, the cancer one. And he's not there anymore. So uh, we, we will have a hackathon around health uh, under his name. And there will be a lot of people working. Very nice. In fact, um 
last month, Flanders Bio is a cluster in Belgium for, for, uh, for biotech companies. And so they aggregate data. I cannot show it because I don't remember the password of the data that. But there they said, can you map our companies in there? So we have also companies and patents. And then it would be nice to see the company data. When was it founded? What were the milestones? And so on and so on. So we went to the, the Belgian site of Tom van Acht and others to map that data. So I think if we could do a hackathon there, and let's take some sources, let, let's make five-star data out of data, right? As a yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can put in my eight folks here to, to help you out. Wonderful. So done. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, I hope you like this presentation. This presentation was held in the Brussels Data Science Community Meetup. If you want to know more of when these meetups are taking place, just check the link below. Bye-bye.